According to its website, the Poco X3 NFC should have all the necessary innovations for a superior gaming experience. We're going to find out if that's true. Hi guys, my name's Dan and this is my website. No, it's not. Hi guys, my name's Dan. This is my channel all about gadgets and technology. And today we are going to be testing to see if the Poco X3 NFC is a good gaming device. Is it a good phone for playing the latest, greatest games? So I'm going to be playing some of the more popular, most powerful, most graphically intensive games. Games like PUBG, games like Call of Duty Mobile. There's a Battleship game I really like to play that's really good fun and we'll play a few more and we're just going to see how it handles. The Poco X3 NFC has a Snapdragon 732G processor which is a new processor. I think it's one of the first phones to get that processor and essentially is supposed to boost gaming capabilities. It also has six gigabytes of RAM. Its 6.6 inch LCD display has a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It also has a pretty big battery and it has a liquid cooling technology which should keep the phone pretty cool even when playing graphically intense of games. So let's go straight into it. Let's start playing some games and see what happens. So the first game I'm going to play is probably um, Call of Duty. Call of Duty Mobile, really like that game. It is, again, quite a big graphically intensive game. Should be difficult for most phones. We're going to start off using the automatic graphic settings, which I believe is just medium. So we're on my favorite map. And as you can see, the graphic quality is automatically set to medium. We're going to change it in another after another game to see how it handles. So while we're playing, I'm just going to go through why I think this phone should be pretty good for gaming. Now, bear in mind, the phone is around about $240, something like that, or around about £200. It's pretty cheap. So if it can play the best games at the highest quality settings, then that is pretty good. We're going to check to see how hot the phone gets. We're going to check to see if there's any lag, any issues with that 120 hertz display. I'm actually pretty good at this game. Like, I've never lost a game of um, Call of Duty Mobile. I've probably only played it 20 times, but I've literally never lost. Here we go, look at, see, I told you I was good. I told you. One of the main reasons I think this phone will be good for gaming is it's bloody huge. It's 6.6 .6 inches or just over that. Just having a screen this large, I mean, there's no notch to interrupt. There's only just that little selfie camera and it's almost edge to edge display. And basically what that means is that your thumbs and fingers are not going to take up too much of the screen. If we compare it to something like the iPhone SE, which I did a gaming test on, it ran all the games fine, but because the screen is so small, your thumbs get in the way. I mean, it takes up half the screen space and then you're not really able to see everything. I mean, just playing on such a big screen makes for a more pleasant experience, but it also makes the games easier to play. We can also, you can also check out the speakers on this thing. Oh, the speakers are quite loud. So if you just have a listen. So now I'm gonna change up the settings so that it's at the highest possible. So there we go, we can change the settings, turn everything on, turn everything to maximum. And it seems to be allowing me to do that, so that's a good sign. Sometimes games don't let you change things because they can detect what phone they're playing on. You know, it limits it because they know that it won't work. So, so now let's play a game on the highest quality graphical settings. So we're playing on the same map, so we'll be able to see the difference, I mean, side by side pretty much. Um, you can already tell that there is a better textures, better color, it is, it is on a higher setting. So we'll see if the phone can handle it. So what I'm really liking about this phone already when it comes to games is the 120 hertz display. The um, Poco really, or Xiaomi, whatever company you want to call it, really pushes this as a big feature. And I can see why, because it is smooth, like everything moves really smoothly. That's basically what a higher refresh rate does. Another feature of this phone is that it has a 240 hertz ultra high touch sampling rate um, and that basically means how quickly the phone reacts or the screen reacts to you touching it that can make the difference when you're playing games i mean you know obviously in, especially in a game like this where it's all very quick the split second difference between touching and not touching could be the difference between winning and losing so but definitely the 120 hertz refresh rate i can tell the difference from my other phones that have much slower refresh rates i've been playing now for a couple minutes and I'm not noticing any lag, uh, and this is the highest settings for this game. The Snapdragon 732G processor seems to be handling it pretty well. Um, six gigabytes of RAM. I've not, I'm not really doing any multitasking, so that doesn't matter too much. But it's getting a bit warm, but not too bad. It's just a little bit noticeable. 
yeah, it's a bit warm. But so the only downside really, I think, to playing games on this phone so far is the IPS LCD display. It's not the best, it's not the highest resolution, it's average. IPS LCD screens don't have, you know, as good colors. I don't think that the blacks aren't as deep, that kind of stuff. But um, to be honest, in a phone that's this cheap, I'm really not gonna complain. I mean, I've got the brightness to highest and it all still looks really good, I think. God, I'm good at this game, oh my God. So I don't know what you guys think, but for me, this seems to be working really well. I'm having no problems with lag or stuttering or any textures glitching out, um, stuff like that. So seems to be handling it really well. So I've just played three games of Call of Duty online and I didn't have any problems. I played two of the games at the highest quality settings possible. Now the battery life has gone down by about 12% or something like that. So that's not too bad. I was probably playing for like 25 minutes or so. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed so far. Like no problems, I would carry on playing that. The large screen makes a big difference, just having such a huge phone. So let's go and play now PUBG because there is a new map on PUBG which is more graphically intensive. It's more, um, you know, it's just an improved map. So we'll see what that looks like on the phone. Let's go. Just the uh, old diving out of the plane. I mean, you can tell this is a new map. It's a lot more colorful. It's a lot more, I think it's a bit larger, isn't it as well? So I'm gonna put it to the highest quality settings possible. However, it's not letting me change to the ultra setting, so maybe this phone can't handle it, or it's saying it's not available. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I like the the textures look good. Uh, again, it's really smooth. Moving around, everything looks really smooth. The thing about PUBG is that I really like the game, but sometimes you can just be doing nothing for like 10 minutes, or you just don't see anyone, or nothing happens. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, so this isn't the most exciting game of PUBG I've ever played, um, but move, just the movement looks really smooth. Again, the 120 hertz refresh rate working really well, I think. Um, the, the textures look great. I mean, this is not on the highest settings possible, but getting a bit warm now, like warmer as I keep playing, but it's not uncomfortable. So the phone actually has a whole mode when you go into gaming. It's called Game Turbo 3.0, which basically boosts everything that's needed to have a good gaming experience. So um, the frame rate is optimized, the st stability is apparently increased. Also with a game like PUBG, because there's so many different controls, so many little buttons, the fact that it is such a large screen makes all of that easily accessible. No, I forgot about the timer. No, I'm gonna die on the, oh, this is such a stupid reason to die. I hate that. Is my teammate gonna save me? Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my God, hurry up. Go, go, go. I think my team's gonna win. Um, I'm not really helping them. I've killed one person and I'm still alive. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's all kicking off. It's all kicking off. Okay, right. My camera ran out of battery, but basically my team won. Um, I didn't really help, but I'm taking it. So that was PUBG, guys. Um, I'm not going to play another game because it's just a long game's play. But as you could tell, I think the textures look really good. The game looks good. The, the battery's not going down particularly quickly. The phone's a bit warm, but not too warm. Now, I re pre-recorded some other games earlier. Played this Battleship game, which I really like. It's also pretty graphically intensive. It's quite a large game. It's like a gigabyte and a half. You can see here what it looks like. And again, it ran really smoothly. It did take a little while to load. I think that is a difficult one for most phones to handle. But apart from the initial loading time, it was fine, it didn't stutter. I played that game on some weaker phones and it has been stuttering, especially when there's a lot of players shooting at all the same time, it can stutter. But on this phone, works really well. And there are a few other games I played, um, some space games, some, you know, uh, driving games. So you can take a look here, what they look like. It doesn't display the best colors or the deepest blacks or the brightest whites. I'm willing to forget about that. I don't think in the grand scheme of things, it makes much of a difference especially when the phone is literally as cheap as it is. This is a super cheap phone. I do think the Poco X3 NFC is gonna be one of the best, if not the best gaming phone in this price range. I think it even beats phones that are quite a bit more expensive, mostly because of the huge screen, the 120 hertz refresh rate, and the rather powerful processor, which is a still a kind of mid-range processor, but they've boosted it and now it works with pretty intensive games. I've been playing for around about 45 minutes to an hour and the phone is quite warm, not gonna lie, but it's not hot. It doesn't seem like it's gonna break or anything, but it's just a bit, uh, quite a lot warmer than it was before. This heat dissipation technology that they have seems to be doing its job. Um, again, if I did the same thing on my iPhone, it would be like so hot. It get, that phone gets so hot when you use it a lot. 
And the battery life is down by around about 20 seven percent i think something like that so for basically nearly an hour's worth of gaming at the maximum brightness the highest um the highest settings for all of the games i played i think that's pretty good so yeah guys that's it that is the poco x3 nfc my gaming test uh what do you think i think it's a very good gaming device for the price of the phone the only thing that is the downside is the uh, ips lcd screen but apart from that, I have no issues with this phone as a gaming device. If you are interested in this phone, then it will be great for you to use the link below. It will allow me to keep making videos and keep buying um, gadgets and tech so I can you know, show them off and show you how good or not good they are. So that would be great. Also, you should subscribe because uh, the next video I make is gonna be a camera test of the Poco X3 NFC. I'm gonna be testing all five of the cameras on this phone. Not long after that, I will do a full review just generally how I find the phone on a day-to-day -day basis because I've been using it for a little while now. But until next time, I will see you around. Bye.